here at St Philip's this is our confessional where people come to make their confession and what I want to do is show you both sides of this but sometimes there's a, there's a bit of mystery and a bit of, uh, a bit of worry about confession boxes and they're a bit secret so come and have a look so this is this is the penitent's side of the confessional. So when you're going to confession, the priest is on the other side of this grill, and we come in here and we either sit here or kneel here. And sometimes people wonder what they should say in confession, but there's no need to worry because you'll find that the prayers are written for you and they're right in front of you there. So you can't even forget if you wanted to. priest side of the confessional. You want to come in and have a look? It's a little bit different because we've no kneeler this side. We've got the stole for the priest which he puts on and a more comfortable chair because I will be sat here for quite a while whereas you're only going to be on the other side for a couple of minutes. Thank you very much, Father Jonathan, for taking the time to speak with us today. So during today's collective worship, all the students were asked if they had any particular questions that they'd like answered regarding confession or reconciliation. So I'm going to ask these questions to you now, and if you could just answer as openly and honestly as uh, possible, please. Thank you. So one of the most notable questions we got was around the idea of crime. So 8DHS, 8OVY, 6LSH and 11DAN all asked about what happens if somebody confesses to a serious crime uh, within the confessional box and many referencing, would murder be forgiven? Okay, good questions. So one of the most important things to know about confession is that it happens under something we call the sacramental seal. And what that means is that anything that is said inside of that sacrament of confession can never under any circumstances be repeated by the priest to anyone else. So if someone confesses criminality, the priest can't go and report that to the police. Now, if it's a serious crime, they might talk it through with that person and they might suggest to them that they need to go and hand themselves in as part of their journey of repentance but it really depends on the severity of it and on the context. And that's something that the priest and the penitent would chat through. Under no circumstances can the priest decide to break that sacramental seal themselves. So murder is a sin. A confession exists to forgive sin. So if someone comes and confesses murder, we might have a very in-depth conversation about what that might mean in terms of what they do as part of their journey of repentance. Eleven JSY would like to know: Can people from all religions go to confession? So confession is a sacrament of the church, which means that, like all the other sacraments, only Catholics can receive the sacrament. So only Catholics can come and receive that prayer of absolution, the forgiveness of God. But of course, anybody is welcome to come and chat to a priest about something that they need help with in their life and receive a blessing. The difference, though would be that in confession, the whole thing is under that sacramental seal, so the priest can never repeat anything that's said. If the person isn't Catholic and therefore is just coming for a conversation and a blessing, in those circumstances, if they said anything that made the priest think they were a danger to themselves or others, or there had been some criminality, the priest would be obliged in that situation to talk to someone else about it. But of course, anybody is welcome to come and have a chat with the priest they will treat it in confidentiality, but not that same seal of the confessional. We are here to help you, to pray with you, and to give you God's blessing. 11DAN would like to know, does confession take place at All Saints? Yes, we have confessions in both Advent and Lent at All Saints. I've been up several times before, and last time that over 30 people came to confession, I think. So definitely happens at school. There'll be some I think two services of reconciliation coming up in school this Lent, but also I'm in school often enough, so anytime you see me and you'd like to make your confession, you just ask me and I'm sure we can do that. 11JSY would like to know, well, who do you as a priest confess to? Well, so as a priest, I confess to another priest and, and bishops confess to priests and the Pope confesses to a priest as well. Every Catholic makes a confession. So 
I try and go about once a month and I'm very lucky because there's a priest that comes to St Philip's where I live once a month to give a talk to a ladies group we have here. So I go and join the queue with my parishioners and make my confession at the same time as them. 11JSY would like to know, well, how often should we go to confession? Okay, I'm gonna give you three answers to that, okay? The first is that every Catholic must go to confession once a year during Lent. That's, that's one of the precepts of the church, we call it, one of the things that makes us a practicing Catholic. But when you should go to confession is when you've got something to confess. So whenever you're aware of some sin or some, some wound of sin in your life, that needs God's healing, that's when you should go to confession. And a lot of people say that it's useful to try and go about once a month so that you're in that, that pattern while asking for God's forgiveness. And also in looking at yourself and knowing yourself and being aware of where your wounds are and where you need God's help. 9BDS would like to know, what's the most common thing that people confess about? The most common thing that people confess is sins. And I'm not gonna say any more than that, because under that seal of the confessional, I shouldn't talk about what anyone else has confessed. I've got a question for you, Father Jonathan. During our most recent retreat, our Year 8 retreat day, um, it was staggering the amount of pupils who said that they thought perhaps they'd already been too bad or um, had too many sins to get into heaven. Is there anything that God would not forgive us for? There's absolutely nothing that God cannot forgive. That is at the very heart of what it is to be a Christian, of God's revelation to us in Jesus Christ. It's the reason that he died on the cross. There is no line in the sand over which, once you've gone, you can't come back. All that God asks is that we turn to him and ask for his forgiveness.